can you start by just telling us how you describe your character and what, how much fun you have in doing this? Sure. Um, character is, is called Beck. Um, that's him. He's really heroic. Um, well, the character is basically a, um, he's a mechanic working um, at a, a, a sort of, you know, a normal job in Ar Argon, which is the city that we've established on the grid. And Argon is faced with, uh, the grid is faced with uh, the sort of tyranny of, of Clue and Tesla's army as they're sort of threatening to infringe upon the freedoms of the people. And his, uh, his friend is killed in, in, in this sort of t kind of semi-hostile takeover of Argon. And it sort of makes Beck snap. He's kind of an average individual with good talent for being a mechanic. And he kind of snaps and, and does a very intensely vigilante thing. I mean, he, you know, he, a rebellious thing where he, he cuts off the head of a statue uh, in defiance of, of the new rule. And basically lands himself in front of the real Tron, who's seen his actions, and deems him his successor, which Beck kind of doesn't initially believe he's capable of. He, he had no intention of starting a revolution, of being a hero, and Tron has put this sort of belief in him that he's got what it takes to lead these people and to inspire others to fight for freedom. Um, and he accepts this responsibility, albeit reluctantly, and kind of becomes, for all intents and purposes, the new Tron to these to these people who are in, in you know, fear of their freedom. How much, how well aware of, were you of the Tron mythology of the worlds before? Had you seen the original film? Yeah, relatively aware. It wasn't something that I really grew up with. Tron came out in 82, I was born in 81. I was always aware of Tron growing up. Probably from <coughs> seeing bits of the film, video games, you know, uh, it's been kept alive in nerd culture for a long time. So I've always been aware of it. And I also remember a number of years, or I, I want to say it was like two to three years, and maybe one of you can corroborate this, but that there was a teaser for Legacy before they finally made the movie. So I, that kind of put it back in my consciousness again that there was all this anticipation, this sort of groundswell of love for the original film and this excitement that they were going to be revisiting the world again. Um, so I became one of those people very excited um, that they were going to jump back into this world and um, with many of the people who had been in the first one. And then seeing Legacy, I loved Legacy. And so when I was approached to, do, to be a part of this, um, I, I definitely was familiar and excited at the notion that they were also going to be telling stories within the universe chronologically between the first and second films, um, and that there would be some kind of connective tissue to what they'd already done in the films. Um, it felt, you know, sometimes these things are done as offshoots and they don't always have connections to what's already been established. And um, That sometimes is a shame when you've got people that really love and appreciate the mythology that's already been created. So I was really pleased about that as well. Can you talk about um, your character Beck's relationship with Tron and maybe the chemistry between you and Bruce Boxleiter? Yeah, I, I've only gotten a chance to record a couple of times with Bruce, um, but it was a real treat. Uh, you know, and I think it, it, it certainly elevates our, our story, having Bruce actively take a part in this and reprise that role. It's been really amazing. Um, the character, the relationship is really a kind of, he's sort of a mentor to, to Beck, um, a kind of teacher and uh, a guide in Beck's evolution. Because Beck is, you know, Beck had had a, an, an image of himself that has, is in the process of vastly changing. And Tron is there kind of goading that process and helping to build um, the new version of himself in a way with, with Beck. So it's a, cool, it's a cool relationship. What did you think when you first saw your character drawn? Cause did you see it before you did your voice? I saw, um, I saw conceptual drawings. Does um, that help you at all? It does, yeah, it does. When I first met on this, 
I was shown, I believe I was shown test animation, and I was shown a lot of conceptual art, both character art as well as, you know, the machines that they were creating for this, some of the vehicles they were creating. And because it was very true to what had been established in the other films, I was also already really familiar with it. But yeah, it helps immensely. Um, just getting a, a, your head around the space that you're occupying and, you know, what your character looks like is important um, in terms of just knowing where you are when you're articulating these things. Um, you know, you, there's a language within the context of the grid, a lot of references to light cycles and, you know, various things that we don't actually have in our world, so having an understanding of that world helps, for sure. What's the most unique thing? You've done a lot of voice acting, especially for main characters, like in Nine, and uh, what's the most unique thing you can say that this character has that you bring with your voice? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Ask Charlie. Um, I, I, I'm not really sure. I think... I think at the heart of Beck, and I don't know that this is, I suppose it's something I'm bringing to it, um, but that the heart of the character is, uh, y y there's, a, there's something very human about him. You know, they, they're all programs. They're all existing in a space of ones and zeros and algorithms, <laughs> um, really. But there's something very human about him and uh, pure about his intent. And he's also... You know, he's not infallible, like he can, he makes mistakes and he can fail. And I think that, that I try and, and be him with that sense of humanity.